Good evening, everyone. We welcome you to the Department of Architecture end of year exhibition. My name is Marcela Danigo. I'm an associate professor and I'm the head of the department. Joining me today, we have four more professors of the department that will follow with a series of presentations. Firstly, I introduce Angela Kiriakou Petro, assistant professor and the associate head of the department. Then we'll have Michalis Georgiou, assistant professor. Then we'll continue with Yorgos Hachichristou, professor. Dr. Anna Stathiou, associate professor, will also deliver a presentation. So let's start the event. So in this online session, we'll officially launch our first ever virtual end of year exhibition. The end of year exhibition is our most important and anticipated event at the end of every academic year. It usually takes place in the bespoke premises of the department, the Architecture Research Center. We have been housed in our building since 2010. The building was an old shoe factory that has been refurbished in an industrial style. The RC building serves as a cultural hub, hosting many activities, events, lectures and exhibitions. It has won various international distinctions and it is an intelligently flexible and dynamic space, as you can see up on screen. Unfortunately, due to the pandemic and the current social and physical challenges imposed this year, our exhibition could not take place at ARC. Therefore, our department has innovatively responded by setting up a virtual exhibition space to host the 2019-2020 work. The exhibition is a fantastic opportunity to view the vibrant projects developed by our students under the interior design and architecture programs. Following the official launch of the exhibition later this evening, everyone will be invited to embark on a virtual journey by accessing an online duplicate of the ARC building and navigating the 2020 virtual end of year exhibition. My colleague Michalis will further elaborate on this and the making of the exhibition at the end of this session. The link to the exhibition can be found at the description under this session on YouTube. Uh, it will be activated at 9 p.m. I will now very briefly introduce some facts about our department. Our department was established back in 2006, offering the five-year professional diploma in architecture, which also provides for a four-year intermediate Bachelor of Arts degree. It also offers the Bachelor of Arts in Interior Design since 2002. Our department is continuously developing and expanding. Our new distance learning MNC program in computational design and digital fabrication in collaboration with the University of Innsbruck in Austria runs from fall 2019. English is the official language of instruction. However, Greek support in early years of study is provided in undergraduate programs. The five-year professional diploma in architecture is recognized by Cyprus Scientific and Technical Chamber, ETEC, and the European Commission. Therefore, our graduates are professionally certified and allowed to work anywhere in Europe. I forgot to mention that all the images that you see on screen are, are actually from work produced in our department. A couple of words about our faculty members. Um, we have 12 full-time faculty members teaching in the department with a lot of local and international distinctions. Our faculty have studied, taught and practiced in various countries around the world, so they enhance the multicultural character of our department. The department is also supported uh, by a pool of about 20 part-time faculty members. In course subjects like design studio, only 12 students are allocated to one teaching faculty. This ratio affords a truly personalized education and ensures the high quality of the program. Our building, the ARC building that I've introduced earlier on, uh, includes cutting edge computing, model making and fabrication labs. Students have their own personal working space and have 24 hour access into the building. We organize a plethora of extracurricular events like workshops, exhibitions, lectures, seminars, conferences, etc. We organize uh, a lot of field trips and collaborations with other international universities. Our department has an increasingly international outlook and actively collaborates with various international institutions and associations around the world. 
With the last several years, our students and faculty have won over 30 international awards in architectural competitions. On screen, you see a few samples of these distinctions. These successes are a massive achievement, as in most of these competitions, we were competing against some of the most prestigious architectural schools and professional practices globally. We are particularly proud of these distinctions, as we believe that the very personalized teaching approach and our international outlook have been catalytic towards the successes of our students. Our department focuses on preparing students for the ever-changing future. A lot of design studios are set up as research laboratories and think tanks that pursue innovative ideas about the future of inhabitation, of the city, of infrastructure. Our students develop very unique skills and thinking processes that allow them to truly design for tomorrow and propose intelligent, environmental, technological and spatial solutions for the societies of the future. And of course, the current social and physical environment has more challenges ahead than ever before. So engaging with the future for us becomes a priority. Our first ever virtual exhibition evidences that as a department, we are ready to innovatively and positively respond to whatever challenges the future may bring. We will now proceed with the presentation by Angela Kiriakou Petro. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Angela Gerekopetru. I'm going to briefly explain the architecture program structure, focusing mainly on the architectural design studio. We can see that there are five main areas of study, design, technology, history and theory, communication skills and management. Design studio, uh, out of five areas of study, the architecture design studio is the core subject that essentially brings together all other subjects. Design studio for years one to three changes every semester. The aim of each architectural design studio is based on a series of learning outcomes related to drawing, communication skills, the scale of the project, the use of the site, technology and materials, and the complexity of the architecture program. By the end of year three, students have covered the fundamental skills of the architectural design. And on entry to year four, the teaching methodology of the studio shifts. Year four and five are merged. The architecture studio is taught through a whole academic year rather than being broken into semesters. Architectural design teaching for the fourth and fifth year students is organized around research units. The unit educational model is based on independent research and collaborative learning developed with the environment, with the environment of the studio units. <clears throat> Studio teaching for fourth and fifth year is designed to encourage and support students to develop their personal identity, architectural propositions and ideologies. The unit is practice and research based and theme orientated. As a dynamic teaching method, it corresponds with the unit teaching mission. The unit system also distinguishes our program in relation to others on the island and forms a key ingredient of our identity. The units respond to contemporary political environmental phenomena, architectural issues and staff research. Each unit provides a specific working methodology which acts as a lens through which students investigate issues addressed by the unit tutors. Unit 8, the research unit for this academic year, dealt with the issue of the refugee crisis from the position of the displaced. The unit looked at how the displacement of vast numbers of population raises a series of questions about the future of our living environment. Displacement of people often caused by, caused by traumatic circumstances has adverse effects and consequences for the social structure of thousands of settlements and communities, but can also be seen as an instance of opportunity. The unit attempts to grasp a critical moment in time and examines the current state of the displaced from a positive state of mind that can generate new ways to approach the built environment. Rejecting the idea of welfare, the unit looked at reinterpreting existing and new settlements based on the premise of resourcing, 
new networks and infrastructures in order to benefit the chosen site as well as the new exi and existing population. Social and community systems, autonomous networks and city infrastructures were perceived and shared, re were per were perceived and shared resources and com as, as shared resources and commons and they were used on the, as the basis to create proposals and interventions. Of course, we successfully completed our studio online this semester. A good thing was that we were able to bring together everyone from different parts of the world to take part in our reviews. Thank you, everybody. I'll pass you over to my colleague, Anna Stathiu. Hello, everyone. My name is Anna Stathiu, and as the Interior Design Coordinator, I welcome you today to the end of year exhibition 2020. I would like to congratulate the interior design students who so enthusiastically participated in the program's activities, even under this unprecedented pandemic situation of the last months. Our lessons and our program were transformed smoothly and effectively from face-to-face -face in class studios to online interactive meetings by a combined effort of faculty and students. The visual outcome is presented today in our virtual exhibition. I would like to make a brief introduction to the interior design program, its priorities and the thematics we are dealing with. This will facilitate the exhibition viewers to follow the content of the exhibited work. In the interior design program, we consider design education as a signifier of society and as a leader in development. Design is always inseparable to the forces of society and its time. Our interior design program is a four years uh, Bachelor of Arts degree aiming through a well-structured uh, curriculum to prepare future designers to be able to decode the requirements and the intangible characteristics of their time and design for a better future. Their creativity will influence their era, will signify values and will facilitate people's lives. Social engagement is a major issue for us and our students are encouraged to participate in life projects related to our community. In order to achieve this, the program organizes a diverse and rich series of events, educational trips, lectures with architects and professionals of various disciplines, workshops, international and local competitions, collaborations with well-established companies, collaborations with educational institutions and students from other universities, local and foreign ones, exhibitions, real-life projects. Special interest is shown on contemporary emergencies and social sensitive issues such as homeless centers, refugee temporary settlements, medical environments, even animal shelters. The design studio is the core of the academic program and its content is enhanced by lessons on history and theory, technology and construction, communication skills, management and professional practice. The thematics of the design studio are broad, satisfying any market need. The first year studio lessons introduce students to the design process, the spatial tools, the structural techniques and the elements and principles of design. This is followed in the second, third and fourth year of studies by thematics that are an integral part of our curriculum on residential interiors, on hospitality design with specific reference to new trends such as the target group of the mobile workers, or the use of abandoned buildings and industrial heritage complexes, on retail design and working environments in real life buildings and with real life clients, on exhibitions and educational interiors, 
sustainable values that respect the environment and the society together with the use of technology for the real world are the driving forces behind our students creative production a special attention is shown on targeted courses such as furniture design and also design of gardens and small outdoor spaces. Our virtual exhibition this year follows our long tradition of end of year design shows. Without compromising quality and skills, the exhibition presents our students' abilities to adjust and promotes students' works and faculty efforts. We hope that you will enjoy it. And now, Mr. Michalis Georgiou will continue with his presentation. Hello and good evening. My name is Michalis Georgiou and I'm an assistant professor program co-coordinator of the MSc in Computational Design and Digital Fabrication at the Department of Architecture of the University of uh, Nicosia. Uh, following uh, the presentations of my colleagues, I would briefly like to introduce our new MSc program which is offered in collaboration with the University of Innsbruck in Austria, which started running in fall 2019. In particular, I will briefly present the purpose of the specific program. I will then talk about its structure. And finally, I will present some of the activities and output of fall 2019. Uh, a brief introduction to the purpose of the program. Computational design investigates new perceptions, theories, tools, and principles of design enabled by computers. While digital fabrication emphasizes on new materials, methods, and manufacturing processes supported by contemporary CNC technologies. Today, we perceive an increased complexity generating new requirements for the built environment and the related professions, which are constantly called to respond to the challenges of the digital era. Technological progress shaped by computers and CNC machines presents a key prerequisite for addressing contemporary challenges of the building industry, and it is therefore becoming an integral part of an architect's education. As such, the program explores the relationship between computational tools, digital fabrication methods, and architectural design in an effort to attain a new insight for the production of the built environment. Prospective participants have the opportunity to develop computational design skills and acquire hands-on cutting-edge fabrication experiences while cultivating analytical and creative thinking on the applications of computation in design. A few words on the program structure. The program offers a Master of Science, has a duration of three semesters, and is delivered via distance learning. It runs as a collaboration between the University of Nicosia, Department of Architecture, and its Fabrication Lab, with the University of Innsbruck, Institute of Experimental Architecture, OCPAO, and the affiliated Rex Lab. Both departments are hosted in state-of-art, purposely designed facilities in Cyprus and in Austria, respectively. The program is uniquely structured as to combine distance learning with face-to-face -face education. While on distance learning, participants focus on developing computational skills and theoretical frameworks but are also required to travel to Cyprus and Austria to experiment with digital and robotic fabrication. These visits are framed by field trips, lectures, discussions, and other educational events. Finally, I would like to present a few key moments from the fall 2019 semester, along with the output of the respective workshop held in Cyprus during December 2019. So here you can see some of our distance learning moments and meetings that often occur uh, throughout the semester. Paired with the intensive workshops that consolidate the semester. The workshops are framed by site visits to digital fabrication facilities and projects that exhibit uh, computational design and fabrication interest, like Eleftheria Square or here at the 35th floor of One Tower in Limassol. Finally, participants have the opportunity to attend keynote lectures and discussions related to the field. However, the main aim of the workshops is to apply the knowledge gathered throughout the semester and experiment with digital fabrication methods and techniques. 
As part of the program, back in December 2019, our students from all around the world traveled to Cyprus for two weeks to participate in a workshop that focused on metal sheet forming using digital fabrication technologies. So we have used high-end industrial laser cutting and CNC bending equipment to digitally fabricate a large-scale prototype structure using scrap sheet metal. The students, in collaboration with the faculty, designed, fabricated, assembled, and nicknamed the structure the XMAX. The prototype was later donated to the municipality of Nicosia and is now situated at the Lefterias Square. For more information on the program and the project, you can visit our website at uh, www.arc.unique.ac.cy slash computational design. Or you could experience and even get uh, inside a real scale duplicate of XMAX on our VR exhibition in ARC05 at the end of this webinar. Before we finish this presentation, I would like to announce that due to the challenges imposed by the pandemic and an increased demand for the program, we have decided to offer an additional number of scholarships. You can find more information, including deadlines, and you can apply online on the website of the program. Thank you for your attention, and if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to send us an email. I would like now to introduce my colleague, Yorgos Christou to continue with his presentation. near panorama of events, uh, an inter interactive process of architectural studies beyond the limits of the conventional courses. The Summer Student Workshop of the Cyprus Architects Association with the participation of the Mediterranean Association of Architects, UMAR, run by faculty of our department, took place in Pano Platres during a period of two cool weeks. The students, a versatile group of both local and international ones, went through one's life experience and gain condensed knowledge while leaving behind, or if you want, adding creative moments and traces to the rich tradition and nature of the summer resort. Uh, the Japanese architect Toshifumi Simon, specialist in the Japanese traditional timber construction, gave a lecture and performance in the city of Paphos and contributed to the workshops by enlarging the horizons. The interdisciplinary methodology of architectural education is integrated into the curriculum of the department from the beginning of the studies of the new students. The theme of the first semester is the urban fit, language, which not only theoretically but academically introduces, but also essentially takes place, is choreographed by a celebratory, optimistic and festive environment of the evolution of the city and architecture. The first acquaintances with perceptions and concepts of spatial relations are conducted through interactive social and cultural games, including dance workshops run by the head of the dance department of our university, Dara Milovanovic. This is how the critical approach, the creativity, but also the necessary revisit and reversal of our perceptions about human topographies and relationships begins. The students rec reconsider also their relationships with the space, objects, surfaces, light and time. Respectively, the students are invited to understand and uh, respond and take part in current social issues through interactive workshops, choreographed kinesthetic experiences in the buffer zone of Leader Palace, and the House of Cooperation retrofit the insights of the young people with fresh perceptions of social and environmental sensitivities in relation to the growing problems and crisis of our current times. In less than a month of studies, the students are invited to create proposals of the Buffer Fringe Festival of Performing Arts of the Home of Cooperation curated by Elada Vangelo. They were expected to present them in front of the visitors. The result is amazing, which facilitates and at the same time enforces them to tackle with practical issues of construction as well as theoretical, social, 
and environmental issues. The theme of their project, the Urban Fees Glendic, calls the students to perform a creative and enjoyable workshops and proposals that they present in front of an interdisciplinary group of guests. The form of the presentations and reviews, including the final reviews, or otherwise called exams, takes place of a festive, atmospheric, high-quality installation. The students had to present proposals that are socially and environmentally sensitive and that lead to sustainable urbanities. The discussion that they generate deals with current local and global issues. The activities of our department take place in various parts of the world. The recent presentations, seminars, reviews, roundtable discussions expanded from Cairo in Egypt to Reykjavik of Iceland. The exchanges between various countries contributes the most to the internalization of the programs and the opening of the horizons. The current issues of the cultural heritage of our country motivated and forged the identity of various courses through the cultural heritage class in collaboration with the Department of the Antiquities of Cyprus. A rich event took place at the most significant residence of the Ottoman era in Cyprus of Georgiagis Cornesius. In parallel, tours, discussions, presentations, visits in various historical and contemporary realms of the built and urban environments vividly take place in the academic path of the students. Thus, significant architectural realms ranging from the past to almost the future, the students meet the history in a critical manner, trying to understand the past contemplating the presence and rethinking of the future. Our department's activities include the future students of architecture and do not only suggest the enthusiastic <clears throat> um, workshops, social environmental design, reviving the dead zones that took place in Greece at the Vios Plagas uh, Institute. <clears throat> Uh, finally, the continuations of the events during the emergency state as the current lockdowns did not interrupt the vibrancy of the activities. Last November, a live lecture and seminar took place in the Metsovium Polytechnical School of Athens, and this month it had its continuation on the new mode of online activities. Um, the rural part of the island and the significance of the cultural landscapes is one more area that the students are encouraged to deal with. The students stayed in the mountainous village of Cannavia, while in collaboration with the community, they proposed hybrid living where creativity and accommodation combined together can function as catalysts for regeneration of sometimes forgotten areas. I will now pass the online podium to my colleague and head of the department, uh, Markela Maniku. Thanks. Thank you, Yorgos. Continuing from Yorgos, I would like to elaborate further on a few additional notable moments of our department in the past academic year. I'll begin with our colleague, Yorgos Hagiochristou, has been awarded with the Cyprus State Architecture Award 2019 in the category Outstanding Architectural Project. The award was equally granted to his project Smalto Dental Clinic and the project Garden House in the City by architect Christos Pavlou. Yorgos project Smalto has also been nominated to represent Cyprus at the Miss van der Rohe European Awards 2019, along with a few other local projects. Students of the Architecture fourth year course, uh, History and Theory of Sustainable Design, uh, under the supervision of part-time faculty member Dr. Christos Papasteriou, published a very interesting magazine titled Resustain. The students prepared the content, the graphics, the cover, and even proposed the title of the magazine. The idea is for it to repeat every year and probably open to contribution from more members of the school. In October 2019, our department organized a series of activities in collaboration with the Cyprus Architects Association in parallel to the EU uh, Ms. van der Rohe uh, 2019 exhibition titled What Old What's New. The 
The activities took place at the State Gallery of Contemporary Cypriot Art, SPEL, in Nicosia. Uh, a few of these activities included an open design studio session from fourth and fifth year unit displaced architecture and in situ research and presentations under course contemporary architect, taught by part time um, faculty member Fidias Dobliwis. Yorgos Hachichristu and myself also participated in the closing event of the exhibition with presentations and a roundtable discussion. In September 2019, students of second year architecture design studio met with the mayor of Yermasoy and Limasol to discuss the future development of the municipality and in particular the area around Amathos River. They later developed a series of projects that you can enjoy in our exhibition. In December 2019, our department in collaboration with the GC School of Careers hosted the art exhibition titled I Can. Students of GC School and artists assembled three-dimensional sculptures inspired by pop artist Roy Lichtenstein with the support of our digital fabrication facilities. The exhibition was later hosted in GC School of Korea's arts uh, department, where the artworks were auctioned to raise money for charitable causes. Interior design student and tutor Dr. Kika Kazamia Ioannou, in collaboration with the Pancipian Organization for the Promotion of Literacy and the support of Kian Trading, proposed to redesign and renovate the waiting room of the children section in Makarios Hospital in such a way which would promote different kinds of literacy. The project was completed in November 2019 and officially inaugurated. The event was widely covered by local media and press. Interior design students also participated in the Christmas Fiesta of the Cyprus Anti-Cancer Society with a series of activities. During the lockdown, our department successfully organized a webinar where spatial experiences of tomorrow were discussed. Uh, the same event was also delivered in Greek. So, now we will proceed with our student presentations and honors projects. It is a tradition in our department to assign honors awards to graduating students with best performance in design studio. This year, we have assigned three honors awards to the architecture program, and two honors awards to the interior design program. God's Power Nueke, Panayota Papadopoulou and Panayotis Ioannou will present from architecture, and Yasmin Rashtan and Konstantinos Pitsilidis from interior design. We start with Yasmin. Welcome everyone. My name is Yasmin Rashtan, majoring in interior design at the University of Nicosia in Cyprus. This is currently my fourth and final year. I'll be presenting my final year project supervised by Dr. Anna Evstathiou. Before I begin, I would like to thank Dr. Anna Evstathiou for her constant support and for giving me this opportunity to display my work. In this project, I would like to share some personal thoughts and ideas brought into life by design. The purpose of this project is to design a museum where visitors are invited to explore different concepts of the mind through experiencing different rooms inside the building. The point is to go outside of the mind and observe it as an outsider. It is therefore an experiential rather than an informative museum. The way to interpret the various parts of the museum and the way to move through it is up to the individual approach. My attempt was to combine my interest in spiritual matters with design. The building that is used is a former industrial building spell that was recently transformed into the State Museum of Contemporary Art. The particular building was chosen because of its interior and the structure that permits me to integrate the design concepts and enhance them. The different mind processes are explored in different spaces within the two connected floors of the building. In the senses room presented here, visitors are invited to indulge in the senses related with sound, touch, and sight. Experiences often neglected and taken for granted. In the room of attachment, Visitors are asked to enter a jail cell, with small voids for placing out only their hands. They either go in opposite cells with a partner or another visitor and touch him, her, through the holes. Or alone, and contemplate on the idea of how attachment can imprison a person or be an obstacle to true love. As for the illusion room, the idea is to go behind a glass surface that distorts what one can see. The distorted perception of reality 
can help to see how thoughts and perceptions can change. The buffer zone and the view of the occupied part of Nicosia is a challenging background. The design of the central stairs represents a chain of thoughts. A simple thought progresses into more complicated, unrelated manners. The stairs are merit, and the up and down process is a challenge presenting what the human mind goes through, revisiting issues that fills one's mind. In the suffocation room of the second floor, visitors are expected to navigate through the space that differs in terms of tightness. The walls are layered and curved, so spaces are unfamiliar. Visitors are required to find their way out and sometimes bend down and crawl. The process represents torturing thoughts that can sometimes challenge human beings and make them feel suffocated. In the labeling room, visitors go through a series of curtains with labels identifying themselves with some of the concepts. At the end, they find themselves in front of a distorted mirror. The concept of societal and personal labels identifying humans and as a result distorting their perception of themselves is questioned here. The stillness room has two levels, separating the past and the present. The past is presented in the overwhelming projection of moving images representing memories, whether good or bad, as well as thoughts. While in the next level, a white clear space represents the present future moment without a conceptual substance yet. The idea of the overall project was to create an experiential narrative of the thinking mind. There would be a number of different representations, of course, but in the present proposal, an individual approach of the designer was explored. Hello, my name is Konstantinos Pisilidis, and I am a student of the interior design program in the architecture department of the University of Nicosia. I present to you my final year project, supervised by my tutor, Dr. Anna Estathiou. My final year design project is a live project under construction in the center of Limassol. It is intended to host medical offices and practices either private or under the ASE. My proposal for the interior spaces used the existing architectural study attempting to create working spaces with private and public areas that would be functional, readable, and easy to circulate with advanced interiors and equipment and a design that will enhance the space with a distinguishable brown identity. Investigation on similar case studies and research on the specificities of the thematic provided me with the necessary background to design medical offices. My concept was based on triangular prismatic shapes combined with the 80s culture aesthetic in terms of color and materiality. Diagrammatic analysis helped me to define the boundaries of the different spaces, their adjacency and proximity, and the circulation through them. After a number of interviews with doctors, constructors, and discussions with my tutor, the final plan for the medical offices was realized achieving a layout that maximizes space utility with a reception and a waiting area, serving five different medical offices. My proposal for the building development shows a pharmacy on the ground level and the mezzanine related in use with the upper floors. Why the levels above are all designed as medical offices. The skin of the building is composed by diagonal aluminum rivets and concrete beams as in the architectural study. The common areas of the interior spaces are designed according to the conceptual development of folded parametric polyedra of a golden shiny finish that visually connects through indirect reflections the spaces around. The non-reflective wooden parquet of the floor constructs with the shiny gold prismatic shapes. Colored plants inform clients about materials and colors, furniture and equipment. The project answers all questions relation to construction details materiality, choice and price of equipment, aiming to provide an, a complete and professional study. The pharmacy provides a holistic approach of services. At the ground floor, it hosts a variety of services, 
such as a small cafe for healthy refreshments and snacks, a section with cosmetics, and the main lobby in which the pharmacist assists clients for the medication. Clients are expected to explore the space and be served by a number of interrelated services of contemporary pharmaceutical environments. In the mezzanine storage and secondary services are provided with access only by the used by the pharmacist. The design of the pharmacy is also completed with all structural details and studies for the colors, the materiality and the equipment. The presented project hopes to be a complete realistic interior design project responding to market demands. Thank you. My name is Panagiotou Papadopoulou and I am a fifth year student in the University of Nicosia. My final project has a title of Rethinking the Industrial Community. It is based on investigation into envisioning an innovative solution for the future of refugee camps that are integrated into future forward cities. My project, based on the Greek capital of Athens, the concentrated area is Eleonas. Eleonas occupies an area of almost one square kilometer, just a few kilometers of the center of Athens. It bears the characteristic of a post-industrial site, a westscape even of an urban void in the urban framework of the metropolitan area of the Greek capital. The analysis of the area of Eleonas revealed that there were certain functional missing, especially those covering daily life needs and those which could activate the area after working hours, such as recreational facilities. However, the area of Eleonas is close to the city center and very well connected to it. Therefore, the need for commercial and recreation functions could be easily fulfilled for the people of Athens. These photographs depict some characteristics of Eleonas which perceived from our first visit in the area. Some of them are the dead ends, the discontinuity, the bazaar, the trucks, and the transport companies, the dust and the noise. Those are abstract sections of the area show the everyday life and activities of three important groups of people in Eleonas. First are the students, after the workers, and also the refugees. We can observe above their everyday needs and what uses we have chosen to include in the design for each group as we improve the daily life and try to bring all of them together in the area by participating in the cultural or in other activities and workshops. Eleonas opened in August 2015 and was the first official temporary accommodation center for asylum seekers in Greece and is located in an industrial area of Athens. There are many craft machine workshops in Eleonas which are defining the identity of the area. Proposal idea will be workshops, co-working artist studios, existing craft machine foundations, theater, music, events, etc. Each component of my proposal will be designed in a way that it can in a very decline rate will be adapting to changes due to future events or unpredictable developments without losing the overall common visual language connecting narrative, the rim of build, masses, and such. The main themes of the proposal are summarized as activating, inviting, and connecting. The design proposal could be a reminder and a visual link to the past, bring the refugees in the life of the city, and overall concept can resemble a linear network to the river. With the new landmark, I will declare the beginning of different perception of the purpose and content of Eleonas. The main idea is to use the river as transportation. The concepts proposed intervention will, will be designed as a connecting path from the area to the city center by offering a range of activities and experiences that build in the strengths of each zone and linking them with clear pathways. The new riverfront attraction proposed are linked with existing area attraction via improved streetscapes and other pathways dotted with inviting places to eat, to work, to shop, to educate and rest along the way. My proposal will provide a built environment where heritage structures and showcased and celebrated through cultural events, preservation, restoration and adapting reuse. Also will provide infrastructure to connect existing building education 
facilities and public space information nodes throughout the district. And last, we provide infrastructure to support economic prosperity for local business and opportunities for new ventures reused the existing buildings. The sloping landscape and the building sloping roof merge into one continuous experience. The surrounding landscape does not only serve as an aesthetic backdrop, but it's also integral to the building circulum, which focuses on nature and sustainability. Fourth, as sloping landscape bands, the building merges with the surrounding nature. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Gus Pawanke. My project is titled Nicosia Water Research Institute. Under Unit 8, Displaced Architecture, we tried to identify the various challenges facing refugees and how to provide solutions to their problems through architecture. My research question is, how can water as a powerful tool of control and future commodity be used as a unifying factor to create an all-inclusive sustainable community for Syrian and African refugees or migrants and the community at large in Nicosia. The aim and focus of the project is working on the concept of self-reliant cities and identifying Nicosia as a starting point. Nicosia Water Research Institute seeks to relieve, empower, and further integrate refugees into the society of Nicosia. A young Honduran migrant by name Martinez serves as the link to designing for Syrian and African refugees, and the research on water sources in Lebanon became the foundational concept to create a community around water. The project is located in Cyprus within the Nicosia district. It is situated in the community of Ayos Andreas. The site was chosen because I wanted the project to be close to a water source, being the Pedios River, and between the buffer zone to inspire a center for bridging political, social, and economic differences. One basic concept of the project was to integrate the site with the natural landscape, allowing vegetation from the river into the site. The architectural strategies include integrating living units and programs with water filtration systems, organizing the building around courtyards, creating private, semi-private, and public areas, allowing the roof to become part of the landscape, and lifting the building off the ground at some areas to allow visual and physical flow. As revealed by the detailed drawings, I incorporated the water filtration systems as part of the architectural character of the building. The section expresses the attempt of inserting the various programs with the landscape and on different levels of the building, with moments revealing social interaction, private activities, and community synergy. Water serves as a unifying and connecting element of this project. This diagram shows how water connects the various programs and activities of the project, both within and outside the site. This project seeks to establish a partnership between the locals and the refugees. This can be achieved through formal and informal interactions where ideas, goods and services are exchanged. The various ways in which this interaction occur include workshops that foster an exchange of scientific knowledge on gray and stone water filtration systems between the local and the refugees, accidental interaction between the locals and the refugees along the pedestrian path, exchange of knowledge from volunteer teachers to refugee children, and the exchange of goods and services in the market between the locals and the refugees. Thank you for your rapt attention. Greetings to everyone. My name is Panagiotis Ioannou and I'm honored to be presenting my final year project to you. And this is how the study goes. The proposed project focuses on displaced women, local, 
any refugees who are victims of domestic violence and trafficking. The design is providing the users a temporary accommodation and rehabilitation facilities in order for the women to prepare for their new lives beyond the proposed built environment. The Salute Paris competition identifies the Petit Century out of Paris as one of a series of sites on an abandoned railway track made up of many urban voids and disused industrial and warehouse buildings. The future of this extensive desert network is still uncertain and looking for a timeless solution. Industrial towns, warehouses, malls, and etc. have a similar fate in many urban scapes once the use is completed. The linearity of space makes it a challenge for urban planners and designers at large to utilize the area without uprooting the essence of railway tracks. France is one of the most registered countries in Europe with victims of human trafficking. 30,000 women were identified in prostitution in 2017, 60% from Nigeria, 20% from France, and the rest from all other places around the world. France is one of the 10 countries with the highest domestic violence percentage in Europe. In 2017, more than 20% physical and sexual abuse among women in France were reported. Statistics shows that one to five women suffered or faced attempted rape, which led them to suicide. The proposed building is characterized by a defensive outer look, creating the sense of privacy and security, which is important for the particular target group of users. The loop building encloses smaller courtyards in the center, acting like a medieval castle or monastery. The proposed building includes a mental and medical rehabilitation center, accommodations, and small industry. Retailing and learning classes such as self-defense, language, legal rights, dance, and yoga are additional activities that are not only accessible by the victims, but also for the locals and visitors, providing benefits for the local community. The project works with the existing industrial character of the site, taking on an industrial identity itself. The scale of the spaces and the materiality of the building have an industrial nature. As you can see in the section, it's an industrial uh, look from the outside, and it's a multiple celebration inside of the spaces, such as the dance classes, the workshop, or the shops. The quality of the spaces inside the building, however, focuses on creating a journey through intensively variable spaces such as courtyards, industry, enclosed spaces, chaotic spaces, calm spaces, and comfortable spaces. Spaces are both connected and disconnected to the outside world in various ways. The intention is to create an unconventional type institute for women victims that cover all of their needs and they do not make them feel like prisoners or disconnected from the outside world. The proposal is located in Boulevard Ornano 18E area of Paris. The allocated site has been important in sequence to define the qualities of the proposal. In combination with the proposed built schemes, the design utilized one of the urban voids which is located in between of central industrial buildings. This intervention brings additional activities to the site, not only for the chosen target group, but also for the locals. In addition, the surrounding high-rise buildings benefit the specific project as, as it closes the new building, keeping it from hidden from the public eye. At this point, we are at the end of the presentation. I'm really glad and proud for the final outcome. I want to thank the people that were supporting me through the way, such as my two doors, my family, and a special giant thanks to my lovely best friends that were next to me. Lastly, I would like to thank you for your time and hope you enjoy my presentation. Thank you. Thank you to our students for the outstanding presentations. We will now move to the Graduating Students Award Ceremony, which is the most exciting part of the evening. The faculty members of the department every year decide to give special awards to students for high academic performance 
and students who have achieved special qualities and competences in the past year. For the interior design program, and presented by Anna Estaciu, would like to give the Honours Award to Konstantinos Pitsilidis and the Honours Award to Yasmin Rashtan. For the architecture program, presented by Angela Petru, Alessandra Sweeney and Natasha Christou would like to give the Honours Award and the Outstanding Achievement and Dedication Award to God's Power Nueke. The Honours Award and the Community Initiative Award to Panayota Babadopoulou. The Honours Award and the Social Awareness Award to Panayotis Ioannou. The Design Sensitivity Award to Morfo Grigoriou. The Greatest Improvement and Dedication Award to Eleftheria Tatuli. The Urban Integration Award to Dario Esposito. The Neighborhood Integration Award to Alexina Larue. The Social Assimilation Award to Asma Abdallah. The Greatest Improvement and Dedication Award to Andonis Klados. And the Technology and Innovation Award to Andonis Nicolau. Congratulations to all our students. It is now almost time to officially launch our virtual exhibition. I'll hand it over to my colleague Michalis, who will present the making of our exhibition. Thank you. Thank you, Marcella. Hello again. We have arrived at the moment you have been waiting for. However, before I share the link and virtually open the ARC 2020 VR end of year exhibition, allow me to share a few details about the background and how we have developed this project. The exhibition was realized as part of a very unique module of our curriculum. The Catalyst is an elective intensive one week course that changes every year depending on the interests of faculty and visiting specialists. Usually the Catalysts are hands-on workshop style courses that produce tangible large scale output. During the Catalyst week, we have a great vibe at the department with side events, final presentations and a party. This year, it was different. At some point, due to the nature of the course, we were even discussing of cancelling it entirely before coming up with the idea of an online catalyst. And as such, we have logged more than 60 hours online, operating extreme digital workflows involving at least five different software packages. We have modeled the entire ARC building we have spent endless hours of computer rendering, and we have experienced crash computers and unprecedented frustration to finally realize the first ever online Catalyst course and the ARC 2020 virtual exhibition. I would like to specifically thank all the participants, Odysseus, Christina, Andreas, and the 12 students with which we have embarked on this fascinating virtual journey. I would like to thank Simlexity for the support in equipment and personnel and all students and faculty of the department that uh, have contributed their work. The ARC VR 2020 end of year exhibition presents the response of the department to the COVID-19 lockdown and the consequent cancellation of the most important and anticipated event of the year. The space you can soon experience is an identical copy of the department facility an award-winning renovated shoe factory. You can now uh, use the link on your screen or click on the link in the description of this webinar to visit the exhibition. You can experience the exhibition using a VR headset or simply through your computer or mobile device screen. Please note that your browser might be blocking the soundtrack. In that case, you either allow audio through your browser settings or manually activate the sound by double clicking on the volume button from inside the exhibition menu. Enjoy. Hello again. So, in conclusion, we're almost there. I would like to my colleagues for the very interesting presentations and their contribution. 
Uh, I would like to congratulate our students once more. Uh, we will miss you very much. Uh, and wish you the very best in your future adventures. And I would like to thank once again all faculty members of the department and all students of the department for their dedication and hard work in such an extraordinary academic year. Uh, in the meantime, up on screen, you can see our contact details. Uh, please feel free to communicate with us should you have any queries or questions. So I would like to thank you once more for joining us. Uh, thank you for your lovely comments uh, on live comments on YouTube. And we really do hope that we can meet you soon in our premises uh, as soon as possible. So we now invite you officially to circulate our 2020 exhibition. Thank you very much. Bye from us. Thank you. Bye-bye.